when you look at the world today and when you see all of the happenings that's going on, as I was saying in my prayer, road rage is at an all-time high. All over the country, just two or three days ago in Houston, two children were shot as their parents were driving along the road. You have people who are breaking in homes and taking hostages of families. You've got carjackings all over the world. It's getting so that the children cannot even go to a playground without 24-hour monitoring. And even at that, someone is bold enough to even try to kidnap a child. There are bombings all over the world simply because the people have a misconception of who God is. We have to be careful that we don't get their God mixed up with God of the Bible. The God of the Bible that we serve does not uh, project us or have us to go just anywhere and kill for no reason at all. We have to understand that there are some terrible people in the world and they are not being controlled by the spirit of the Most High God. But we have to understand that they are being controlled by the prince of this world who is Satan. And Satan is very busy in this world. You only have to look and see with what they've done, what now, when we were coming along as family TV. Family TV and cartoons are not cute anymore with Homer Simpson. And some of the shows that they show, uh, family are sitting down watching those shows and Everything is violent nowadays. The games are violent. Uh, you can't sit down and play Twister anymore or do different things. Or Chinese bingo, you can't play. Those are, those are, are obsolete. You, you can't play those anymore. Or sit down and play checkers, which challenge the mind, or chess. Everything has got to have a violent side to it. So it seems... I said, it seems as if God does not even exist anymore. But I'm here to tell you that he's still alive and well. We don't have to tell him what's going on in the world because he lets us know in Ephesians 6 and 12, he says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but, but we, we, we wrestle against principalities and, and powers in high places. From the government, they're hooking and crooking. Uh, everybody is after a dollar dime of yours. And it seems as if God is just sitting there saying, you know what, I'm just going to let it go on. Well, you got a point. Because he says when he comes back, all of this has to take place. Yeah, everything you see now got to take place before he comes back. Now, I'm going to give you a little look into the end. Uh, he says that he ain't coming back until everybody has had a chance to hear the gospel and the good news of Jesus Christ. So don't let anybody fool you. Don't let anybody hoodwink you uh, that God does not know what's going on. Amen? Amen? It tells us in his word that he knows. And so to prove it to you, and keep your Bibles open, go to Matthew chapter 24. Uh, I know I've preached this before, uh, but I thought that God put it on my heart to say it again, remind you, uh, when you look at different things in the world and someone asks you, what's going on in the world today? You can point to this. When they ask you, say, when the end times are coming, you can say, this is pointed to this. And so the thing about it is that we have to understand, and when you go home, read chapter 23, 24, and 25 to get the general context of the lesson uh, that we're going to be preaching today, uh, but uh, chapter 24 kind of gives you the meat uh, of the whole thing. Um, and so when you're there, say...
Yeah, say got it. Got it. Okay. Um, the thing about it, it, re it reads on this wise. We're going to start from, it's really the text is, is structured, uh, or the message is structured from verse 1 to 14. Uh, and so when you get home, you can read the rest of the chapter. And Jesus went out and departed. I'm reading according to the King James. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another, that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of the coming and the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you not be troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Yeah. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Hello, friends. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endureth unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. I'd like to talk to you from this thought. Just remember what Jesus says. Just remember what Jesus says. Um, we need to understand the, the, the crooks of this text. Jesus is steadily teaching and he's almost through with his ministry. When this discourse starts, Jesus is in the temple. He leaves the temple and goes out to his favorite praying ground which is the Mount of Olives. You need to catch this. He leaves the temple and goes outside to the Mount, uh, the Olive Mount, and he can see the temple from where he sits. Amen. Now, you don't know this, but that was the last time Jesus ever went into a sanctuary. That was the first time, he, that was the last time he ever went to church because he left and was outside. What he was trying to show the disciples is that uh, you're talking about all this grandeur, you talk about all of this temple. You talk about all this stuff that they put in and it's a showcase. He said, man, that's not what I'm, I'm talking about. Church is where you go out and find it. Maybe I need to say that again. Church is where you find it. A lot of folk come in here and pretend to be doing church. But church is outside of these four walls. We're not getting hung up on the building or what's in the building, or how comfortable it is, Jesus says, not one stone will be left upon the other. And they said, surely not. I'm pretty sure in the conversation, surely not, not this temple. It, it took a long time, and it's grander, and it's able to stand. It's on a solid foundation. Surely, if you do the history on the temple, when it was torn down 40-some years later, guess what? Uh, they even plowed up the ground where the temple was built. And they tried to rebuild the temple again, and the ground mysteriously caught on fire and burned up. When God says it's finished, it's finished. And if God says it, it settles it. And so we need to understand that here, he's letting them know that your mission is going to be outside. So this wasn't really downtime for the disciples. But it was a time to ask questions. Uh, hello, Bible study Wednesday night. This is the time that you can pick God's heart. And so you can pick his understanding. So what did they ask him? It says, Lord, we...
and hear what you're saying. Are you saying that when his temple comes down, uh, that's going to be the end of the world? No, no, no. You're thinking short distance. I'm showing you the futuristic part of the ecclesia, the church. That nobody can destroy the church because the church is in the hearts and minds of the parishioners. You will never destroy that. But the buildings, he says, don't get, don't get so hung up on that. Uh, my church is beautiful than your church. My church is bigger than your church. That's the problem with us today. Uh, we got churches on every corner. And, and the thing about it is that I think sometimes in the world we got too many churches. Let me explain that. Because everybody got their idea how they ought to run their church. That's why they are. So we need to understand uh, that uh, some churches on the corners are not doing what God says do. Uh, when it's time to help somebody in need, they, 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 they send them somewhere else to help you. Help, thank you for helping me preach this. They'll send them here. And, and we don't have a problem with that, but you ought to do what you can first before you send somebody on their way. But here it is, here it is, here it is. He, he says, he says, I know that you are in love with this temple. I know that it's beautiful. It, all of the furniture is good. He said, but guess what? It's all going to be burned away. Let me, let me help you here. Whatever you got, God gave it to you. It belongs to him. You cannot take it with you. You, you might ought to put a pen there. You cannot take it with you. Uh, uh, you got to understand that only your soul, if you be saved, is going to make it into heaven. And so his disciples gathered themselves together. And this is the first thing that he tells them, don't be deceived. There are a lot of churches, quote, churches that are religious, quote, religious, but don't have nothing to do with Jesus Christ. They are not uh, deeply rooted and grounded on the principles of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. You need to understand that there are a lot of folk on TV, all they want is your money. Give them your money, send them your money. A lot of the mega churches, and I'm not saying all, I'm not being inclusive, but most of them is all about tithing and paying money. Let, let me explain that to you. Here, we on the honor system in most of the churches in the area are. Says that's between you and your God if you're paying your one-tenth a night. We don't raise and ask you to show your W-2 from your job. We, we don't ask for direct deposit. Thank you, Sister Davis. We, we, we are like God. We trust you to do what's supposed to be right. But just a little trip up the road, you have to show them your W-2. And they used to would let you pay it yourself, but now they have payroll deduction. Well, you have to understand that every church that says they are church are not doing uh, what they're supposed to be doing. I've, I've, I've never seen in the Bible where God uh, 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 forced anyone to give her anything. It was always asking. Even when doing the tabernacle, uh, God told Moses, ask the people to give. And in one, one accord, they gave more to Moses, gave him a little time off. I, I, hallelujah, I'm waiting for that day right. at Bell Zion to where I can say, you've given so much. We're going to give you six months off. I know Brother Terrell is going to shout right with me. <laughs> but the thing about it is that we have to understand that, that Jesus is telling them, he says, don't, don't, be, don't be deceived. So you got a lot of folk who can really fake Christianity. They talk good. They look good. They know the scripture, baby. They can recite it more quickly than you can. They pick up the Bible and they can read it from cover. And, but the thing about it is that uh, they know of God, but God is not in them. And so they will deceive you. How many of you have met a boyfriend or a girlfriend and uh, you thought they were the walk, they made you walk on air? But later on down the line during the courtship, you found out they wasn't all they were made up to be. On, on Facebook and on this match, all of this stuff, you don't even know the person. They can switch bodies or heads and send you anything and then... You meet these, these people are, you, 
Don't let them deceive you. You can come in and rub this cloth on your hand that I bless with holy oil. Well, where you get the holy oil from, number one? Where you get the holy cloth from? Rub it, sleep with it under your pillow, honey, that's junk. Don't be deceived. I am the one. I'm sitting before you. I am the only one. I'm sitting before you and I'm giving you this information because times are going to come when folk are going to try to deceive you. The other day there was a young lady who was, uh, she wanted to sell her cell phone uh, in order to buy her child some, a gift for his birthday and the guy gave her the money. It was $200 and all of them was fake bills. You better check your money. There is funny money going around. And just like funny money, that's funny religion that's going around. You better be careful who you enjoying yourself to and who's preaching. If it ain't in the word, if it ain't in the written word, then honey, you need to check out. He says, don't be deceived. You can find that in chapter 4 and verse 11. There are many going to come in my, in my name. Hello, David Koresh. Th these things are not just... Uh, Jesus is just saying them. He's giving them an insight. Now, they later ask him, well, you know, what time is this going to be? He said, I'm going to tell you, you'll know the signs of the time, but that's not for you to know. And even I don't know it, nobody but what? The Father in heaven. Right. And, and I said the other day at a funeral, if, God, if, if we knew when different things would happen in our life, we'd play hooky. It, 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 we try to pass it on to somebody else. And if we knew what time God was going to call us home, we'd show up two hours late. If that were possible. Some people are just fashionably late. They're late for everything. Uh, the disciples gathered themselves to ask him the question. And the first thing he says, and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. I can do this for you. I can pray for you. Well, you can pray for yourself. Amen. The first person I ought to be able to pray is you pray for yourself. And then you ask those who are around you who are of the same faith. And when I say faith, that means love in love with, with Jesus Christ to pray for you. Amen. Because uh, the prayers of what? Of the righteous, what? Availeth much. And so it's okay to have prayer. Uh, it's all, always good to have community prayer. And so he says, but don't be deceived. Jesus even go on, he says, even Satan who can turn himself into a shining light will even fool some of the elect. That's you and I. You have to be careful about who you trust uh, with your life because everybody is, some people are just shaking it. How many times have you seen on TV where they've uncovered where a doctor or a dentist wasn't even a doctor or a dentist? Yes, and a lot of times we'll go to the doctor not even checking his credentials. He's got a big old plaque says University of what, what, what? Yeah. We don't know nothing about him. But Sister Newton, we'll pull our clothes off in front of him. <laughs> we'll tell him all of our history. And, and, and then come to find out he ain't even no doctor. You got to do your homework. And even in Christianity, you better do your homework. When someone comes in this church and tells me that salvation comes later on in life after you accept Jesus Christ, that's wartime for me. Because the very instant that you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior... You are saved. And Ephesians 1 and 18 clearly tells us that. That if, if and I told him, I said, if, if that be the case, if someone can take me out of God's hand, then God is a lie. Or you a lie. It's one of the two. And I don't believe God is a lie. The thief on the cross proves it to us. And for our search, he's never been to church. He's a thief. He's a criminal. He's a malefactor. And the thing is, is that when he realizes who Jesus is, he says, when you come into your kingdom, 
will you remember me? He says, this day, not tomorrow, not later on, uh, not AARP where you have to take a month and they check you out. He says, right, this day, you will be with me in paradise. I'm almost through with this. But here it is that Jesus tells them that don't be deceived by folk. Folk don't just drop up. They don't just dress up doing Halloween. Yeah. They, they dress up on your job. They dress up when they come to your home. And they even dress up in church. Yeah, they, they put on a good front. So Jesus says, don't be deceived. And then he tells them in verse 6, he says, now here's the key. Don't be discouraged. Because some folk are just like the birds of the air. Remember when the farmer was sowing the seeds? And as he sowed the seeds, the birds would come and pick them up and eat them. Folk that hang with you that don't mean anything to you are nothing but those birds. They eat up the word. Guess what they do on Sunday morning? They sit next to you, Brother Paul, and they lean over while somebody's talking, and they say, uh, man, I need to, that's, uh, that's a bird. Just eat and you can't hear what the pastor's saying for you trying to listen to the bird. So every now and then, you got to put a little distance between you and the bird. You've got to let somebody know that you're in church. To get the message and the word of God. To thank him for what he's done for them. You're not here to give up that. We have to understand. He says, don't be discouraged. A lot of folk tell you, well, you know, you got just what you deserve. You remember way back when, when you did? Don't go for that. God does not work on, work on that way. Encourage people. Encourage people that they can do it. I like the little commercial about the little boy. Uh, it's about a car. Uh, but uh, they took him to football practice, and he could care less about football. He's sitting in the back seat with his mouthpiece, wiggling, and his, his mother's thinking to herself, he stinks at football. And say, he, 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 he could be a good sports announcer or something. I know you've seen the, the commercial, but anyway, the dad, as he's driving, he says, wasn't he great today? And the wife just kind of bucked out, and she said, yeah, every now and then. It's okay to encourage someone. I, I didn't say lie to them now. I said encourage. You know, sometimes we can get to encourage and we can make it so sugary sweet that it's dripping off. Don't, don't, don't do that route. Just say, baby, you can do it. Hold on. And, and that's what Jesus is telling him. It says, don't be discouraged because you got some folk who would tell you, well, uh, like the other day I was fishing with a, with a young man. Well, he wasn't young. Uh, he looked like he was older than I, I was about my age. And he says, when you're dead, you're done. I said, oh, no. No, you're not. He said, what do you mean? I said, because if you got Jesus, you live on. I said, but now if you don't got him, excuse me, English teachers, if you don't got him, then guess what? You don't have no saving power. And so we need to understand uh, that you're not, if you got Jesus, when you die, that body goes back to the worms, the worms eat it up, but your soul goes to rest with Jesus Christ. He, he says, don't, don't be discouraged. You, you're going to hear wars and rumors of wars. You're going to see that they be not troubled for all these things must come to pass. You got Syria. You got Russia now flying the same airspace with the United States. It's inching closer and closer to an all-out war. You need to understand that these things, what, must happen, must come to pass before the end come. He said, these things are the beginning of what? Sorrow. Our heart is heavy for friends because we know how we felt on 9-11. Yes. We know what it feels to want to get on a plane. But honey, all I can tell you to do is just be prayed up because God will take you through. It's like the lady in the airport. She says she's from America. She said, I'm leaving to go to France right now. They say, aren't you afraid? She said, I got my God, and I'm not going to let them stop me. That's the attitude that you have to have when you are, you know, not being or let someone let you be discouraged. I looked at Fontanet from LSU, even though they lost last night. I, I like that young man's uh, way he came from and what he's all about. He says that when he was coming up, the, the, the worst thing you could tell him is what he couldn't do. And then he was out to prove to you that he could do it. I look at Al Tume. He, he, he's just barely five foot. 
but he's a powerhouse when it comes to batting. He's, he's got a golden glove. He's a second baseman, and most times second baseman. But you know what he said? He said when he was a teenager, they sent him home because they told him he was too short and he was too small. But look at him now. He's making millions playing baseball. Don't let anybody discourage you from praising God. Don't let anybody praise you from being what God wants you to be. Don't let anybody, if you can't sing now, keep hanging with the choir. They'll teach you to sing. If you can't usher, keep, usher, keep hanging with the usher. They'll show you how to serve. They'll show you how to escort somebody. I watched this McKinney. She was showing with a hand. You know, most times, Sister McKinney, don't be discouraged because when you show them where to sit, they pick where they want to sit. So I don't even know why we have usher sometime in the church. They just go where they want to go. They go in the heck. You tell them in the back, they go in the front. You tell them in the front, they go to the side. But just keep doing what you're supposed to be doing because God is the one who's going to pay. Everybody can't be a nurse, but I, I learned to put a Band-Aid on. Says the Lord, I, I know how to put a Band-Aid on. I, I, I know how to hold pressure on the spot and don't faint, no pass out. Some folk can't stand blood. They'll pass out. You need to understand, don't, don't be discouraged. And some people who claim to be religious are all about discouraging you. You can't sing, don't go up there no more. I don't know why you got up there in the first place. You, you know how we are. I'm, I'm just being realistic to you. you. You know how we are. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no. Oh, no. You can't sing that song. That's just a Malia song. Am I right, Sister Ellis? Yeah, that's what we do. Anybody can sing the song. It may not do as well as somebody do it. One of these days, I'm just going to start singing one of Sister Ellis' songs. I'm just going to break out in a song. I don't care how it sounds. I'm just going to sing it anyway. I might skip some words, but I'm going to sing it. But don't be discouraged. Are you with me here? But see, because a lot of folk get in and say, well, you know, you missed a word. Uh, you didn't do what you're supposed to do. It don't go like that. You got, I, I, I don't know G from E to C. <laughs> but I do know the Holy Spirit. And I know how to sing with the Spirit. And I know when the Holy Ghost kicks in. And so all I can do is do my best for the Lord. Amen. But now if you know you can't sing, stay in your lane. If, if, you, know, if you know you can't do a task, don't, don't get out there. If you know you can't run a mile relay, don't get out there on the track telling somebody you can run a, a 27K. Don't, don't, don't embarrass yourself like that. So we need to understand, he says, don't be discouraged. All of these things must come to pass. Here you got people bombing airplanes. Innocent people haven't done any wrong. They just got a misconception of what God is all about. Even Islam. It's supposed to be about peace. But every, every, every place you go, they've got radicals in every religion. Be careful and don't be the seed. Don't be discouraged and don't be defeated. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. See, that's what it's all about. This Christian race is about endurance. It's like Paul says, it's a run to the finish line. Yes, no, we don't know what God's finish line got us. But the thing about it is that we're supposed to persevere until the end comes. You're going to see a lot of shooting. And, and this is what I pray every day, or every morning, every night. Now with these phones, they click you when every th something happened. If you were 13 or 2, they're going to let you know that was a shooting over here. A body found over here. A house fire. Sometimes you hear so much that you become desensitized to the actual terror of the event. And we were sitting and looking at Paris. How could someone in eight different locations do that much carnage to some people they didn't even know? And you know what it's all about? It's about religion. It's against religion because there are some fanatics who believe that if they kill in the name of Allah, they'll get 18 brides and a place to stay in heaven. But I got news for them. You need to understand what we're up against. 
It's not about them wanting wealth. They didn't ask for anything. In fact, they went in there and didn't have any demands. They just started shooting up the place. So, honey, this is my admonition to you. Stay prayed up. Right here in Texas City in Lamar, when you go out of your door, pray that God will give you traveling grace. Because you don't know what can happen between here and Kroger's. We need to understand that God has got our back. But we need to be prayed up and we need to tell people, don't worry. And that's my message to you from God. Don't worry. Don't get in all a frenzy. These things are going to happen. That doesn't mean that God is not still on the throne. He says he letting Satan have his way. But when he come back for the millennial reign, he says, I'm going to put Satan where he belongs. And not until then all the rest of you can go back and live with me. You need to understand that God hadn't forgotten about us. But we are blessed. But the same thing that happened over in Paris can happen right here. Folk walk in a church and kill nine people. or You got to understand that it's a dangerous time to be a Christian. But he says, because of me, the world is going to hate you. Remember the young man when he stood up in the school just the other day? Are you a Christian? Say, yeah. Say, well, you're going to see him real soon. Now, you have to look at this from God's standpoint and where Satan is busy in the world. Don't you know God knows what's going on? Sure, he knows what's going on. And we don't know how we're going to leave here. Some folk go in car wrecks. Some people die in their sleep from heart attacks. Some people just die of natural causes. You got to understand, some people just riding along and shot by somebody else. That's just your way, but the key to it is that you need to know Jesus. It is a good place. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. The disciples tell us one thing. And I'm going to be through with this. When they needed to know something, they encased themselves around Jesus. So if you really want to know some stuff, you need to have a relationship or get close to Jesus. Because I don't know in times like these a better place to be that in the safety of Jesus Christ. See, that's the way we can handle this, is that we've got to be prayed up and saved up in order to handle what's going on. There are evil stuff going on in high places. We don't even know. But we need to not be deceived, and we don't need to be hoodwinked on anything that some people tell us. Check it out. You've got the word of God. Check it out. Don't just take it. Be like those Berean Christians. We're going to find out. You tell us that, you preach. We're going right to the book. And we're going to find out. If it don't match up, if what I'm preaching don't match up to this text, then you need to stop listening. But that's why I want you to keep your text open, your Bible open. That's what it says. You need to understand that God will protect you day and night. If he can take the appetite from a den of lions, I know he can protect you. And as Dr. Anderson was saying this morning, if he did not remove Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from the fiery furnace, he said all he did was just cool the furnace off. You have to understand that being a Christian leads us to various situations in life. But knowing God is where it's at. Through sickness, you got to know Jesus. Through trouble and children, you got to know Jesus. To deranged neighbors, you got to know Jesus. And just traveling from here to Houston you got to know Jesus because you don't know when some deranged person is not going to like the way you drive you have them all the time they will just come over on you no regard for what's ever there but God says if you hold to the end if you, if you believe in me brother Holmes if you just stay with me and, and in that 34, 35, it, it, it really gives us, it says, don't doubt him. 
He might not come when we want him to. But he's an all-time God. How many, how many he's an all-time God? There have been situations in your life where you know that it's nobody but the Lord. The doctor's doing surgery. Say, I don't know if you're going to make it. I don't know if you're going to still be here. You'll never walk again. You'll never talk again. But here you are. They done split your chest open and laid it out and laid your heart on the side. And look here, you still here. Told you wasn't going to make it. Sister White tells a story that told her, said, well, she wasn't going to ever walk again. But Sister White is not only walking, she's still driving. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. Don't doubt the power of God. I I'm like this. He brought me too far. I I've been with him too long. He's not only done a lot for me, but he's done something for my children and grandchildren. He, he's watched me. He, when other people with degrees didn't have jobs, I've got a job. When my family was, he stayed with me. You have to understand that these things are going to happen. But if you got Jesus, you can go to sleep at night. Yeah, you can go to sleep at night. You don't have to ride down the street. It's okay to get your permit for your, for your pistol. It's all right for protection, but you don't need that. You better have Jesus because a pistol without Jesus means damnation. You need to understand that God is not asking for us to start no trouble. We as Christians have to believe and don't doubt. And don't tell me about doubting. Because all you need to go back is to Elijah. Just got through with a victory. I don't mind Carmel. And a few days later, he's sitting on a juniper tree asking God to take his life. Behind one woman. He has killed 450 of Baal's prophets. The fire came down. Took the sacrifice and the grove. And hear this man of God, the, the one who sets up a school for the prophets that know the words. He's doubting, Sister Davis. And I don't care who you are. And I don't care how long you've been on the road. Every now and then, something will happen in your life or to your family that will knock you off balance. And if you don't have Jesus, to count on the weight, then I feel sorry for you. I really don't know how the world can go without Jesus. I don't know how the atheists can get up in the morning and say, there is no God when you hear the birds singing and you see the sun shining for years and years and see the moon where it is and the stars in the silvery socket. that has got to be a God somewhere. I can see the grass change from green to brown. I can see the leaves fall on the ground. And in the spring, they're back again. There is a God somewhere. We need to hold on. Bless you. God is the one. He died for us. He's prepared a place for us. And if we hold on, we'll see him one day. And Brother Chip, I don't want to see Paul. I don't want to see Silas. I don't want to see John Mark. I don't want to see Matthew. I don't want to see Luke nor John. I want to see Jesus, the one who paid the price for me. I want to see Jesus, the one who walks with me and provides for me. And I've learned along this way that, go ahead, choir, he's a good keeper. He's a mighty good provider. Yeah, he's a good savior. Do you really know him? Now, don't fool me now. He died for us, but yet he lives. And you ask me how I know he lives. Every now and then, says Ellis, I feel him moving on the altar of my heart, telling me, peace be still. <laughs> a man who can say to the winds and the waves, peace be still. Can, can I help you here? If you notice Jesus, he's an awesome God. In the text, it says the wind was contrary, right? And the waves 
beat up on the ship. That, that, that's what it says, right? And the disciples got angry. And who did he rebuke? The wind. The waves were just acting on what the spirit did. Every now and then, God forgives you because somebody else got you in trouble. It is their fault. And sometimes they, I'm going to get you because you became a stumbling block to my believers. That, but that's for, another, that's for another one. You got to understand that you cannot let folk discourage you from walking with God. Walk with him. Walk all the way. Be like Enoch. The doors of the church are open to anyone who might come, whether it be letter, restoration of faith, candidate for baptism. We need, we need you, our Christian experience. Be like Enoch and God. He says they're walking alone. The conversation got good. And before Enoch knew, he was over halfway to where Jesus was going. And when he realized that it, it says, the story goes, that Enoch says, ain't no sense in me going back home. Is it all right to go on home with you? And one of these days, if we keep walking with the Lord, if we keep talking with the Lord, if we keep trusting in his name, we'll be where he is. That where he is, we shall be also. Sing choir. God I know who will carry you through pick you up and your problem and carry you to where you can handle it yourself amen thank you for singing out of your heart let us stand